Hi, my name is Connor Phillips, and I'm doing my extra credit presentation over chapter 14, which is post-processing. Most alternative manufactured parts require some sort of post-processing after the part is complete to ensure that the part will work for its intended function and fit where it, meet, where it needs to. The major upside of post-processing, as you can probably guess, is this process allows parts to overcome limitations um, that, enhance, uh, that can help enhance uh, the components uh, from their original states. The most common types of post processes are support uh, material removal, surface texture improvements, accuracy improvements, aesthetic improvements, preparation for use as a pattern, and property enhancements using thermal and non-thermal techniques. The first process we're going to talk about is support material removal. And uh, the reason we use supports is to brace areas where it might be thin in our uh, alternative manufactured part or there may be some some part that needs to have some kind of a structure to hold it up. Um, uh, support materials can be classified into two different categories, natural supports and synthetic supports. A natural support is defined as a material which surrounds the part and um, helps, by, helps the building process. In this case a part is usually fully built or enclosed in this build material and uh, it must be removed to for uh, use in its intended purpose. Um, some very common manufacturing processes which use natural supports are uh, powder and sheet based processes. For these powder processes, brushes, compressed air, and light bead blasting are used uh, to remove any excess material that is left on. Along with these manual processes, several automated processes in recent years have started to being developed and used to improve this process and make it more efficient. A synthetic support is defined as a rigid structure which is designed and built to support, restrain, or attach the part being built to a build platform. Typically these supports can either be made of the same material as a build or a secondary material. The secondary material develop, development allows for removal process to be greatly simplified. Similar to the evaporative foam processes, these secondary materials can be designed to be soluble or melt away at low temperatures greatly, increasing the speed of which a part can be removed and to simplifying the process. Shown in the first picture is an example of the sol a soluble process which a part is submerged into a liquid and the support material is uh, dissolved and below is a traditional uh, 3D printed part where um, the supports are just being clipped off. Surface texture improvements and surface refinishing in alternative manufacturing post-processing are another very important process in industry to help combat any flaws that are associated with additive manufacturing and to help improve the aesthetics and performance of the parts. The most common types of unwanted surface features include stair steps, powder adhesion, fill patterns, and witness marks caused by support material removal. The desired surface finish can also be achieved by doing, using several different post processes. Um, if your part is needing a matte finish, you can use bead blasting. Uh, not only does bead blasting help uh, with that surface finish, but it also can help remove sharp edges, stair stepping, and improve the surface texture overall. For parts with smooth or polished desired surface finishes, both wet and dry sanding along with polishing can be used uh, to achieve the desired finish. It is also desired in many cases to paint the parts. Painting will not only help the stair stepping, but it can also help seal porosity and help with the viscous forces. These aesthetic improvements are a post-process that is very important to manufacturers that are going to market their products off of their looks. The top picture shows an automated painting process while the bottom picture shows the stair stepping pattern which is described above. Accuracy improvements for additive manufacturing are something that is very important. Uh, the accuracy of a process can range from 1 mm to sub-micron level in some cases. Typically processes which require high dimensional tolerances would require a much longer build time, making the slowest processes much more dimensionally accurate. The source of inaccuracy come from several different factors including, but not limited to, position and orientation of the part, surface finish, and build time. One of the main sources of, sources of inaccuracy is shrinkage and residual stress induced distortion. Although this can be overcome with scaling the part in 3D modeling software, these, these scaling techniques are not accurate enough to fully compensate for all the residual stress and shrinkage since both vary depending on geometry of the part itself. Another large source of inaccuracy can come from the operation of the machine or program. Depending on the operator's skill level and their real-time adjustments to try and increase accuracy, a part may turn out to be less precise for less skilled operators. Currently the industry is working toward automatic real-time adjustment to try and eliminate the need for expert op operators. 
As a measure to increase the accuracy of parts, manufacturers are now making parts what they call steel safe. Steel safe means that they're adding some extra material to allow for the parts to machine down to the desired dimensions. Since shrinkage is dependent on geometry, algorithms have been uh, derived to help calculate the offsets uh, for all holes and channels to make sure the part uh, will meet the accuracy that is desired. For parts that are going to be used as a pattern, it is very important to keep in mind the shrinkage and make the parts steel safe and also to keep in mind the surface finish and how your desired surface finish will affect your final part. The final process which is greatly used in the manufacturing industry is the enhancement of properties using thermal and non-thermal techniques. For powder and extrusion based processes, the final part is very porous and therefore brittle which is very low in quality uh, for most parts. To combat this, the part can be strengthened using infiltration. Infiltration by a much stronger material like a super glue greatly enhances the properties of the parts. For photopolymer processes, it is very common for polymerization to not be 100% completed during the building process. Due to this fact, several different post-processing procedures help to complete and strengthen the photopolymer. The first post-processor curing apparatus is a machine that uses UV and visible radiation to completely cure the inside and out of the part. Secondly, if a part is put into a very low temperature oven and allowed to cure, the mechanical properties of that part will be greatly enhanced. Some common processes which use thermal techniques are DED and PBF uh, techniques for metal parts. Some major desirables when making parts are specific microstructures and to relieve as much of the residual stress as possible. These heat treatments, while can greatly enhance mechanical properties, must also be designed carefully due to the factor of shrinkage that could occur in some processes. Since each alloy or metal has different properties, specific property or processes have been developed for each metal or alloy. Post-processing is something that is widely used in the additive manufacturing world and is constantly evolving. It is important to consider all of the processes listed above when designing your part and process and to think how you would like your part to be improved with implementation of one or several post-processes.